voiceless. And uh, Gaza for the longest time has been voiceless. Uh, people don't discuss the issue of Gaza always. And uh, we don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be part of the problem when it comes to Gaza. So I would like to talk about the situation in Gaza. You know, um, I was born in Gaza to a Christian family. Uh, and my And for many of you who don't know where Gaza exactly, Gaza is on, I would say, on the southern uh, west part of historical Palestine. And the size of Gaza is 360 square meter, kilometer, 360 square kilometer, which is some people think about Gaza as a huge piece of land, but it's a very small, tiny piece of land with a population that's more than 2 million people. Actually crossed the 2 million people about a year and a half ago. Uh, so it's more than 2 million people who live in Gaza. Gaza since 2006 been, the, been under uh, Israeli blockade uh, all around and on the coastal part of Gaza. Uh, trying to be fast with that, so people are not allowed to enter or leave, goods are not allowed to enter or leave Gaza without Israeli permission, which is very hard to get. Uh, I moved out from Gaza in 2007, and for 12 years, I wasn't allowed to visit my family there because I needed Israel permission. And if you know the distance between Gaza and the West Bank, it's only 16 minutes drive. In 2013, I wanted to take my wife to see my homeland. What's supposed to be one hour drive it was three days of travel. I had to go to Jordan and fly out of Jordan to Egypt and cross it from Egypt to Gaza because the Israelis didn't give us permission. So since 2006, what's the situation in Gaza? And that's a picture of me and my family in the Greek Orthodox Church uh, after 12 years of being apart, we united again for Christmas. So what's the situation in Gaza? Gaza since 2000, uh, uh, since the year 2000 was about 15 major assaults against Gaza. And the, one of the most important assaults that I want to talk about was in 2014, where about 2,300 uh, 2, Palestinians were killed by the Israeli army, compared to 67 Israelis. And I want, I want to bring to your attention something very important here. Ronald Sider, who is a Christian activist and a Christian theologian, wrote in his books, Just, Just, Just Politics, about the Christian colonizer mentality, and I'm sorry to say even the white mentality, when it comes to the value of a human kind and a human person. And he said it very clearly, the life of one white Western is equally 3,000 lives of a third world countries. And that's very true, by the way. We are talking it about practically in Palestinian-Israeli situation. So Gaza is under blocked for the last uh, 13 years. And uh, this picture on the right I shared yesterday, it's uh, my sister's apartment that was destroyed by the Israelis uh, in uh, the last uh, retaliation in March. So how's the situation in Gaza after the 2014 uh, uh, Israeli war against Gaza? We're left with 75,000 displaced people. And it reminds you might of some number in, 20, in 1948, about the same, or the number, with uh, one more zero next to it. 750,000 Palestinians, 800,000 Palestinians were displaced. So history repeats itself with Palestinians. The unemployment rate went up actually to 50 to 69 percent of the people in Gaza are unemployed. 
64% of them are uh, young, pretty young people. 80% of the people of Gaza live uh, on the humanitarian aid, which is mostly supplied by the United Nations. Because of that, the withdrawal of the American support and the European support somehow from the United Nations means a lot to the people of Gaza. Many schools had to close because of that support, hospitals, clinics that supported mainly by the United Nations have to be shut down. 95% uh, of the water in Gaza is undrinkable. And for people who are interested in the environmental issue here, people in Gaza are not allowed to dig uh, wells for water because most of it would be poisoned by the Israelis. And, uh, and most of the sewage water goes to the shore because there is no way to, uh, to process sewage. sewage water uh, in Gaza. So we are talking about uh, a really humanitarian crisis happening in Gaza. This is a beautiful piece of art that provocative and, uh, and uh, uh, Waldorf Hotel uh, in the museum, Panks Museum, shows um, how actually uh, uh, Israel have taken the verse in Bible, teeth for teeth, eyes for uh, an eye for eye and teeth for teeth. And you could see that one tooth is worth of so many, uh, thousands of uh, teeth of Palestinians, but still the Israeli is waiting more for the world. I'll end with this. Uh, again, uh, how's the situation in Gaza? Four hours of electricity a day, and, and, and lucky days usually five hours. Lucky day in five hours. Unemployment. I'll skip all over that and I'll come to this one because it means a lot to me and many other people. How many of you love kids? <coughs> yeah, I want to show hands. You love kids. You care about kids. 50% of kids in Gaza, 50% of kids in Gaza, or less than 18 years old, have expressed no will to live because of the situation. Can you imagine that I have three nephews that they have never experienced in their lifetime? or about 10 years old, and seven and uh, four years old, at 24 hours of power. They never been to a zoo. They never been to cinema to watch a movie. They never experienced what normal children in uh, any other place would have experienced. And many of the children in Gaza would have similar experience of this child that I, it's a picture that I really took of that child and you could see uh, on his eyes the, a story which actually comes up if you read it here, a story of a classmate that was killed by a sniper, Israeli sniper next to Ida camp in Bethlehem. But it's the same story for thousands of children who are going to the border, seeking their right to return to their homeland and being killed and shot down by Israeli snipers. There are thousands of Palestinians who are being shot in the deadly parts of their bodies or in, in their foot and their arms intentionally to lose them with uh, internationally perhapted weapons. Uh, something to consider, because the people of Gaza, more than two million, have been voiceless. And I know some people would talk about Hamas, and I, nothing justify violence and treating people in this way. Because every time I talk about Gaza, people would say, Hamas, what about Hamas? Why are you not talking about Hamas? Yes, I, I understand what the concern is, but I'm concerned also about humanizing my people. My people are not only numbers. And when we talk about Gaza, usually they say, oh, two or 3,000 people in Gaza were killed by Israel's strike. 
And we need to be reminded they are not numbers. Mm. They are humans. Do not dehumanize all people by just putting them from their that identity to just a number. So that's that's what I wanted to share, and thank you for bringing this up. I, I hope this. Yeah. Mm -hmm.